They sailed away in a sieve, they did in a sieve, they sailed so fast, with only a beautiful pea-green veil, tied with a ribbon by way of a sail to a small tobacco pipe mast. And everyone said who saw them go, oh, won't they be soon upset, you know? But the sky is dark and the voyage is long, and happen what may is extremely wrong in a sieve to sail so fast. Far and few, far and few are the lands where the jumblies live. Their heads are green and their hands are blue, and they went to sea in a sieve. The water it soon came in, it did. The water it soon came in. But to keep them dry, they wrapped their feet in a pinky paper, all folded neat, and they fastened it down with a pin. And they passed the night in a crockery jar, and each of them said, How wise we are, though the sky be dark and the voyage be long. Yet none can think we were rash or wrong, whilst round in our sieve we'd spin. Far and few, far and few are the lands where the jumblies live. Their heads are green and their hands are blue, and they went to sea in a sieve. That's what you're doing today, yeah? Hello. We've got lots more inside. Hi, John. Word on the Water is a bookshop, a 1920s Dutch barge. It's now parked in King's Cross and a permanent mooring, but uh, we've been going since 2010 when we started and uh, we spent seven years driving it around London. Originally just me and my friend John were going to do it on my little narrow boat, but we, we met this wonderful Frenchman called Noy, who was parked on the other side of the canal when we were making our plans, who had this beautiful Dutch barge that uh, seemed to be sitting empty. So we went and talked to him and we discovered that it was, uh, he was, the plan had been to sort of buy it in Holland and bring it over and sell it, but he'd fallen in love with it. And he was very bad at selling it, and every time someone come to, came over to drive buy it, he'd sort of talk it down and, oh, the ceiling is very low, or engine is not very reliable, and so he wasn't able to sell it because he didn't really want to. So when we sort of suggested maybe doing a bookshop with him uh, and renting it off him, um, he decided that he'd like to come in as a full partner in the business instead and said well, he'd build his stage on the roof and we could do like events and theatre as well as having a bookshop. Um, so we've been going ever since. And so now, 2022, we've got to take our boat away and save it because Dianti, who is the name of the boat that is the book barge, was built in 1920 and we haven't taken it out of the water for years. Yeah, so this is, um, this is what it was like before we started taking it to pieces. Oh, well, all that wood out there has got to go in, in here. As you can, God knows without the fireplaces it would be an even harder job. We've been running the business off the boat for 11 years. Before that, she was Noy's family home. So it must be 15 to 20 years since the boat was last taken out of the water and looked at. Now she's a hundred years old and it's normal practice to get these boats out of the water every four or five years to do routine maintenance. Particularly in the last five years I've started to feel really guilty about neglecting the boat and really anxious about the consequences of that neglect. Because she's such a beautiful boat and it's very easy for essential maintenance to turn into irreparable damage. So my first anxiety is um, that we get the boat craned out and the reason we're going to have a surveyor on the very first day is to tell us whether it's worth trying to restore the boat or whether she's too far gone and we just have to scrap her. Yeah, the situation we were in was that we can't take we can't take the book barge away from the mooring to refurbish it without losing the shop. But we can't refurbish it without keeping the shop because we would have no income. When I bought Younger Yam, that was to have some kind of insurance against that happening. That if we couldn't bring Deante back to the mooring to function as the book barge anymore, that we wouldn't have lost everything. 
the surveyor at the boatyard is going to be a moment of truth for us of um, whether we've got away with um, what's really been irresponsible but we really haven't had a lot of choice about it because the business has been getting established and we haven't really been in a position to take that responsibility even though it's been increasingly a weight on our minds. The plan is to push the boat from King's Cross. We have to push it because the engine of the book barge died quite a long time ago, like the Blues Brothers car when we arrived at this mooring for the first time. So the plan is, Noy has brought a 1970s uh, fiberglass broads cruiser, which are the boats that um, the public sort of take on the, on the Norfolk broads when they're doing holidays. And he's going to build a Heath Robinson-like device on the front of it, which will attach to the, the book barge and push it 30 miles to Hemel Hempstead. So Noy hasn't been with us for like two years, and then suddenly, bless him, he's come back, and we're hoping he can project manage the entire refurbishment of the boat. Um, it's kind of a long tradition with Noy that he, he's there when you need him, and he does incredible things, and then he'll disappear for long lumps of time, but somehow he can sense through the ether when he's required and he comes back again. And so the plan is that we're going to cut the boat open like a tin can, lift the roof, by a full foot, weld all the way around the side, so basically make the inside of the boat much higher and thus much bigger space. So we're going to take the boat to Winkwell Marina in Hamel Hempstead, which was the nearest place we could get a booking at. Um, that's still a journey of 30 miles, which is a long way for a boat without a working engine um, to travel and also there's 30 locks on the journey which each lock takes half an hour to an hour to get the boat through and we have uh, only 10 days to get through the lock before they close it for, for routine lock maintenance which could take months. Hi Jay, it's Paddy from the Book Barge. Um, we talked on the phone earlier. I just passed on a message from John. We still have to get rid of more stuff from the boat, so I think it's unlikely we're going to be able to leave today. I don't think we're going to be out sail today either. It's it's really windy, um, and you can't. It's going to be a hundred foot long boat, so we can't really uh, take the risk uh, of damaging noise boat as we're driving it. So. Uh, Hey, uh, <clears throat> Paddy again, apparently uh, the, it's windy again uh, today and uh, Noy needs a day off anyway, so um, it's not going to be today. Noy, why didn't we leave yesterday? Because uh, it was too windy and we were not ready. So, and uh, I had quite a party Saturday night. But I think it's good enough. I think that's good enough. Well, I, because I, 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 I'm going I'm to drill through the boat now. Yeah, absolutely not up for electric engine. <laughs> It's made me very anxious the whole process. I'm very emotionally invested in the in the boat, and um, yeah, last week I had a established successful shop, a beautiful home, and and a, a reasonable amount of savings. I've traded all that for the opportunity to do this. All right, drop the rope, Captain. Aye, aye. Yeah, 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 good. So, 
don't know if you need that, but... Just, uh, just push the bum away. No, he's going. Okay, now we try to have it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know, but that's not easy. I know. And then, if I do holes here, it's when we get in the locks, we just have to take the pins off. Oh, and I've got butterfly nuts. No, I've got holes. <laughs> Yesterday, this wheel was in the corner here with all the wiring. But because he has to tow the other boat, He's put the wheel and all the wiring no, here, and then he can see over everything. Are we ready to set off? Almost. King's Cross, so we'll be going through Camden Town. And then all the way, all the way down here. Which is taking us, taking us that way to Hughes Bridge. That's gonna use that's gonna that will be a nice beat. And the ground union canal all the way up. How many locks are we doing tonight, Noy? Have you got a plan? Or? No. No, okay. One for sure. Yeah, yeah. Before we'll... we get to Camden. Yeah, that's what. Was it four locks to Camden? Yeah. If we get to Camden, we'll probably pass the Camden locks, which are three locks. Okay. Uh, I think we're in time. One day, so we've, got, we've got six days in front of us. So if, we're, if we have no problems, we should make it on time. We're we good to go, eh? for trying whether you succeed or not. I see you in San Francisco, eh? Yeah. Right. How close? Yeah, I think it's alright. That's it. Thank you. 
Yeah. Red diesel, we should do it. It's at the front. Um. If I buy some 8 millimeters, Rob is going to buy the meter, yeah? Yes, yes, we can do it for the meter. How much is it then? 8 mil rope. Right. So when we first started here 45 years ago, the canal network wasn't in a great shape. Um, and uh, an organisation called the Inland Waterways Association made a point of having an annual rally at a different place on the system every year, which then meant that lots of people concentrated a lot of effort into getting that stretch of canal up and running and good again. And um, dozens and dozens of boats would go to the rally, make a point of actually going there, wherever it was in the country, be all over the place, and have a great long weekend. And that was a way of getting another stretch of canal um, back into A little bit on the back. Yeah. Oh yeah. A little bit, but the two passes flat. Yeah. And look at this way. I reversed that. Yeah, that I saw you did it yesterday. Yeah. So. Oh. Maybe, maybe then the knees are on. Ah, oh, that's right. That's livable, isn't it? Uh, it was a present from my grandma. <laughs> she was really fast on it when she got like. Five years old. It's almost a century practicing. Oh! Basically, I've played music on the book barge for a couple of years now and uh, bumped, I hadn't seen Paddy for a while and bumped into him at a pub in Royden. The next thing I know, he sends me a message and says, can you help us move the book barge? And uh, he actually, he mentioned, he mentioned Jason and said either you or your son. Now it turns out he's got both of us, so it's his lucky day. Be easier, it will be to control. Yeah, 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 yeah. The faster you go, the easier it gets. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right, oh, guys. I know. All right, it's, and yet, it's muddy as well. Yeah, you're all good. <laughs> they've, they, they've got ahead on the tandem to open the locks so, so that we can go straight in. 
we don't have to stop on the side and make the lock ready. So we go straight in with the book barge. But the way I customized it doesn't help with the, with the, with the bar like that. Oh, you can. It's not gonna last, but I would do it till the next lock, and then I'll bolt it. I've got the bolt for it. We still have to go through 22 locks. So we haven't done many locks, but we've done a third of the way. Uh, we were very happy about yesterday's journey, because uh, uh, we've, 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 done, we've done many, many miles. Uh, gosh. Done Denham Deep Lock, and we're now in the next one after Denham Deep Lock. Uh, with uh, with Water Lock, Black Jack Lock.
we've still got 11 locks to do and we've got two days. We haven't, we've got one and a half days. We've got to do each lock twice. That's a little bit nerve-wracking at the moment. We, uh, we've grounded a couple of times, turning lots of very bendy, bendy corners coming up here. Because we're 90 foot long and uh, uh, we had to sort of walk along other people's boats and stuff. So it's going to be like a really relaxed looking, desperate race for the next day and a half. Everyone knows it was horses, but apparently it used to be the children in the families much more often than, than people talk about. But it works quite well once you get it going. Up until getting the mooring at Granary Square, this project has been in a was in a daily state of existential threat. The Canal and River Trust weren't terribly supportive of us in the early days, um, partly because we would play live jazz music on the roof of the boat outside the houses of people who didn't know that we were only going to be there for 14 days and so there were quite a lot of complaints and I think the Nallan River Trust who were at that point based in Leeds thought we were like a party boat or something that never actually seen the shop. So we were just chased around by sort of constant sort of low-level legal threats and we were never making enough money you know there were days where it was like should we have coffee or should we have cigarettes because we can't have both today um, and it's only really since we got this wonderful mooring in, in King's Cross that it began to stabilize really and start feeling like it was going to be sustainable and um, maybe we'll see us into our into our dotage when we failed to win a permanent mooring at Paddington, which we fought for for a long time, we, we were already selling the, the, the boat and contacting estate agents and trying to sell it as a floating shop. And the project was already over in our heads when we got the phone call from the Canal and River Trust inviting us to Granary Square to have a meeting. Because we don't, we only got to get through the one that's closing. We don't have to get all the way there. But 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 is it? Does it stop? Ah, it's here. Okay, look. The one that's closing is Apsley Lock. Here. Apsley Lock is here. Sixty-six. No, where are the locks? Two hundred seventy-two. We've done that one. We've done that one. So it's only six locks to go. Yeah. Because after that, we can take all the time we need to go. Yeah, I remember. Past it. As long as we can get past Apsley in the next two days, then that's only another five locks now. It's all fine. So what felt like a rather desperate race against time kind of isn't now. Which is why I get to make a cup of tea.